Okay, hi travelers. I've got my little camera set up on my tripod here. And I'm going to pre-record this little intro so that I can put it in front of every video. So unfortunately, if as you go back to look at your moon and rising signs, you'll be hearing this again. But <clears throat> it's okay. So um, I told you that for January, there were going to be, a, there's a new deck of cards and a new way that I'm going to be attempting to read the cards. Um, the cards are the Fin de Cicle. Okay, known as the Kippers. And uh, it's not a new deck. Lots of people use them. Okay. Um, supposedly, they're like the Lenormans. Only I find them to be completely different from the Lenormans. And just in my experience with them. And they, for me, are more like the La Vida Sabila cards. Uh, I've also discovered that there are so, a few things missing from the cards um, in, in terms of situations that could happen. There's cards that are missing that could uh, refer or relate to some of those situations. And as we go further into the year and I continue to do more readings with them, you'll, you'll understand what I mean because I'll talk to you about it. Um, and so I, you know, read the little book that came with it. Okay. And, uh, that's all well and good. Some of the stuff I didn't understand or I did not agree with. And so, you know me, I created my own little book, The Fendacy Clay. Now, <clears throat> before I talk to you about what I did with the book, I am quite sure there's going to be somebody out there who's going to come up underneath the video and be like, well, that's not how the cards are read, or that's not what the cards say, or that's not what the meanings are. And that's fine and good. Um, I have a process of bonding with my cards, of imprinting with my cards, and I wrote about that in a little short article over on Substack about tar tarot hygiene. And so in imprinting with the cards, um, they were really talking to me a lot. And so I was able to go back in and write my own little book and add some extra interpretations into it in terms of how the cards spoke to me in combinations with other cards. And so that's what's contained in the book. All right. Now, uh, the way the cards are going to be, here's the deck. Okay. And so they're almost like the... I find them completely different from the Lenormans, especially the French Lenormans, even the Dorndorf, the German Lenormans. They're completely different. I think these cards are a little bit more plain spoken. So in that regard, they um, behave a lot like the Levita Sibila. I've been doing some practice pulls. I haven't necessarily had uh, to use the Sibilas for clarification, but I may have to. Um, that's not the fault of the cards. That would be me, the reader, not understanding what the cards are saying to me. So I will be using perhaps, uh, if need be, uh, the La Vida Sibila for a bit of clarification. Um, these are going to be shorter readings this year. Um, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe a 10 card spread, anywhere from um, uh, six cards to 10 card spread in a pyramid shape with three additional cards off to the side. Those three cards additional off to the side will be dealt first, face down, and then the rest of the cards will be dealt face up. So the three cards to the side that are, are face down are uh, will be uh, things that may come into play, okay? Again, as with all readings that I do here on YouTube, these readings are free, therefore they are general. And in order to gain any insight into um, your own specific situation requires a personal reading. Um, and the way that I do personal readings, how you book with me, uh, you contact me by email and I get your birth date and your sun sign and just your questions. I don't want to know the story. I don't need to know the story about what's going on with you. I just want to know what the questions are. And then I read for you. Um, uh, I do live Zoom readings for 60 minutes. Everything else is recorded, which you uh, upload it to YouTube so that you can go in and view them, download it, save it, delete it, whatever you want to do. I don't need the reading anymore. It's yours to do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, and so... Um, I always like to give that its general 
because I'm going to be reading for so many different people of sun, moon, and rising signs. So again, if you recognize a story, uh, then you can always just book with me. Uh, you can go over to the about box section of my channel and there you can find my reading packages and I left one off the 20 minute reading so it's up there now in the about box section once you pick your package you simply email me and then we go from there okay I have payment links everything so uh, that's pretty much it I wanted to explain to you uh, the cards how I'm gonna I came about some of these interpret and before I finish I want to give a shout out to Bella Dutch who talked to me about these cards she said she loves them and now I understand why so thanks Bella I appreciate that um, I've been looking at them for a while but just they didn't seem interesting to me and I had bought so many decks I didn't speak but this deck does a lot of talking so with that being said um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this down and then we're gonna get started with the readings so I'll see you in a bit bye Hi Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is going to be your January 2023 general reading. Keep in mind, I didn't say this on the rest of them, but anyway, keep in mind this is a general reading and the messages will not resonate with everyone. Please check back to your Moon and Rising sign readings. Uh, that story may resonate more. In order to gain any insight into your own situation does require a personal reading. I didn't even put this. I'm, I'm just working kind of haphazardly here. Uh, if you want to book a reading with me to look at your specific situation, you can email me at the address that I just put on the screen and then we'll go from there. You can go uh, to the about box section and view uh, and take a look at the pricing, the reading packages. So simply pick one and then email me and say, hey, I want this particular reading and we'll go from there. OK, so you saw the introduction uh, that I placed about the Fame Dissy Clay. This is a new deck of cards that I'm going to be uh, using um, for this particular month of readings and as I stated uh, the way uh, the reading is going to be done there will be three surprise cards that are face down and then there are going to be ten cards face up in a pyramid and after we finish reading the pyramid then we'll turn over the three cards to see what the other influences that may be coming in to affect the situation and then you'll get an opportunity to formulate a question to the angel answer cards and to the golden Nostradamus and that's how we're gonna wrap it up okay I do hope everyone is having a great Christmas uh, everybody got what they wanted you're able to see the people that you wanted to see uh, it's the first time we've really been able to get together since COVID so I've already done some meditation and shuffling on the Libra sign and glyph We are going to put one more rifle on this. These cards speak a bit differently. Uh, I don't find them at all to be like the Lenormand cards, uh, which is the way they're sold. I, I don't find them to be that way at all. I find them to be more in line with the Sabilas, but they lack a lot of vocabulary that the Sabilas lack. And I have not, I think only maybe one or two readings, I can't remember which ones for which signs, I actually had to utilize the Sabilas to try to coax out a bit more information okay so cut the cards here we go let me move these over here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the three surprise cards over here okay and we'll come back to those later so here we go first card down great fortune let me let you look at it sorry great fortune there is Fortuna herself. Next row, unexpected income. Ah, but despair, which kind of negates that card. We'll discuss that in a moment. Next row, change. Oh, wow. The thief, that's never good. Poverty. Hmm. That's quite interesting, Libra. Hmm. Last row. The gift. That's our timing. <laughs> Sudden wealth. Hmm. Fortune. 
false person concern. My. Well, so, for all intents and purposes, Great Fortune is the luckiest card in the deck. And basically what we're looking at in this situation is that we could say presently or at the moment uh, or in the distant past, near or distant past, that everything seemed to be going great. We've got great fortune. We've got unexpected income. And typically unexpected income is when you uh, find something uh, lucky. So let's say that uh, you found a billing error or you found... Um, you discovered some kind of tax error, right? Um, you, it, it's not necessarily money that you earned. It's like money that, that you find, so to speak. But then, then despair comes. Now, two things. I think that whatever this surprise thing was that was supposed to be good, turns out not to be good. Despair implies um, the idea of uh, tears and anxiety and worry and fear. Um, it talks about the idea, here in the card itself you can see in the back, it says not hiring or not whatever. So this could be the idea that maybe you suddenly lost some income, something that you were expecting to get, okay? Something that you thought was coming but it doesn't come. and and that brings about a change. Now typically the change card can be just that. It can indicate um, relocation, so new apartments, um, new places to live, new jobs, okay? But it also metaphorically just talks about a change coming in and it is a very negative change and it comes in the form of if not someone who's actually stolen something from you, okay? Then it talks about something being uh, taken away from you. All right. Uh, it, it has a connotation of few, but few doesn't really fit right with any of the cards for me. So we're going to say it's less than whatever it was. Something happens, but it, it it's not as much as you would think it is. But additionally, the thief card here, because uh, if this is a person um, you see the two suspect looking figures. This is the Victorian age. So a woman dressed like this would be, you know, a street walker. And then you've got the street urchin. But sometimes thieves come well dressed. Okay. So to me, this is really can be anybody that, you know, in your midst. All right. And we see that poverty, whatever this, this thief has taken or this situation is few of, it creates a condition of um, a loss of income, uh, not having enough money to take care of your basic needs. But on a more metaphorical level, it can be the idea of lacking something. If this is a relationship issue, it is about being un unloved and unsupported and finding yourself in a very predatory and hostile environment. But then we see the gift. And remember, I said this is our timing. So usually the timing for this is the next holiday, big holiday or celebration. So we know that today is Christmas that I'm reading. So this could be happening today or at least New Year's Eve. Okay. Or whatever the next big holiday is. And then we see sudden wealth. Now, this deck for me has lots of... Um, cards about money, um, which I think it's kind of overkill, um, although I understand the explanations of, of, of what they are, but sudden wealth can be that, money out of the blue, but it also has this connotation of something sudden, okay? Here with the thief and poverty falling over these two cards says that whatever this thing is, it's not what you think it is, okay? Okay? And then we have the false person and with the thief. And so this says to me that it is someone, uh, is that you behind the mask or is it someone else? And is it two people and are they working together? And then we see the card of concern. And so concern can be just that. It is another card, someone like despair or, or, or so it implies worry, but it also applies not the ability not to think straight or be able to formulate plans. Uh, it comes next to a um, 
not necessarily a significant card, but it also, it just kind of says to me that uh, I, I can't even quite describe it. Let me go to my book uh, here because there's, there's things that the cards, my guides gave me that didn't come with the book. So hold on. Let me first go to the despair card number 32. The following cards. Well, we don't have any of the, the positive falling cards here. Okay. Uh, following it. So let's go to number nine. The change card. Right. It, it Metaphorical and literal change. Is what that says. Uh, but then we have the thief card. And next to sudden wealth here it implies someone stealing from you or a con or a swindle it could even be unscrupulous business partners that try to steal your clients and gossip about you and shady contracts okay um the change card doesn't really tell me anything except uh, that there there's going to be a literal change here um the poverty card number 37 A lack of control, being in a bad position, being down on your luck and misery. It predicts deprivation in the material and emotional realms. Okay, that's what this card is saying. So something obviously is being taken away. Some either an opportunity for change that's going to leave you, you know, kind of, or that literally someone is going to steal this opportunity from you. So with the gift card, as I said, the gift card. Uh, lessens the blow of nearby negative cards. Um, lessens. Doesn't say it averts it altogether. Okay. Uh, the sudden wealth card, number 17. I'm sorry, number 11. Is something totally different. Uh, and I've already just said it talks about lottery wins, raises, promotions, bonuses, inheritance. It announces a success and influence. Secure business partners and lucrative contracts, but next to the thief card, okay, um, it says that someone is stealing away from you. And I don't have any significant cards in this, so that would be main male, wealthy male, mature woman, mature male, privileged lady. I don't have any of those cards here, okay, or even the uh, mature male. I don't have any significant cards here, um, but then I come to... Um, the false person card. Now, remember I was saying to you, this can imply a bad luck and losses due to the actions of either another person or your own actions, right? Is that you? Or lack of action thereof? Okay. Um, let me see here. And, and to me, that's it. That's what the card says. So it's a change, literally a, a, a change. Um, let me see the concern card here, number 33. Uh, basically, it, in, it's confusion. So there's somebody here causing confusion here. It's not as grievous the concern as the this card, okay? But this simply says that... Um, it is the idea that you don't know what to do. You, it, whatever the situation is, it just has thrown you for such a loop. You're not going to know what to do about it. Okay. Um, and so what are the three cards that are going to be coming in? Child. So to me, this is a, both a descriptor uh, and a, um, a descriptor. So the child card represents new beginnings or new things, something new starting or happening. It can apply to anything, but it also has the connotation of something being naive and vulnerable. Occupation. This is your job, what you love doing, how you make your money. And with these cards, it says that somebody's either stealing from you, okay, 
or they're trying to take your job. Okay. All right. And this could even be a new job, a new situation coming up surrounding your work. What you think is going to go well, you're going to find out that somebody's out thwarting you. Last card, courtship. Now, if this is about going courtship, this is not, doesn't talk about, you know, romance, so to speak. It does, it can indicate dating and meeting people. It's not true love because if you look at that card in the back, Cupid's arrow is not even drawn. But this card also talks about uh, meeting people and having conversations or uh, someone trying to talk you into something here. Okay. Uh, hold on. It doesn't represent contracts. That's a marriage card. I just want to make sure that I give this to you right. Right. New people entering your life. It is an attempts to seduce or talk someone into something. So it talks about meetings. So <clears throat> um, I feel that this is either somebody that you are thinking of joining forces with. You're already in business with. Maybe you are considering going into business with them. A merger. Uh, there are no cards here of legalities. I don't see that. Um, if this is the idea that this is a new job that you enter into. You're going into a new environment. It's everything seems okay, but then boom, despair hits because you're going to find out, right, that there's people there in that environment that do not have your best interest at heart. So <clears throat> be aware. Uh, let's formulate the false person has. Wait a minute, there's something I wanted to see with that too. A change of bad luck. Yeah, that's what it says. Someone stealing from you taking away opportunities it's 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 a change it's a quite uh hold on because if i'm not mistaken this is the unexpected income i don't know if it's this card or this card has a connotation of something happening sort of like out of the blue and i can't remember yes it is the 27 number the the sudden income card something that happens surprisingly sudden unexpected change now it says and improvements but we see that doesn't happen here your luck changes this is luck this is lady luck she's right at the top so what this is telling me is that the wheel is going against you at this moment okay and so you need to be very very careful and very circumspect who you choose to talk to who you choose to do business with who you choose to uh, bring into the fold. You know, like I was telling my daughter the other day, give people the side eye, keep them at arm's length, don't sign anything, okay? <clears throat> don't agree to anything, don't commit to anything, because that's what it looks like to me, okay? All right, formulate your question for the angel answer cards. a turn of fortune is what it is you know and I've even seen well when I was imprinting with the cards this to say let's say if you move to a new place this could be literally somebody breaking into your house and stealing all your shit <laughs> you know you just moved to a great place and then suddenly despair hits why because you know, or you took a new job or you relocate and then somebody breaks in and takes all of your stuff or somebody you find out that the contract you signed or the conditions and the terms uh, in which you accepted whatever, it's going to leave you, I, I think, flat broke if you're not careful. Okay. And again, the timing is here now. And with the false person, it's a sudden change of bad luck. And you're not going to know what to do about it. Okay. Okay. So be careful. Here we go. <clears throat> Here's your card. This one. It's up to you. Well, isn't that interesting? Okay. You know, I had these boxes here. Hold on. So I could sit the cards up while I was reading them to you. It's up to you. <laughs> That's a 
big statement. Remember, and I said this could be problems, change of luck, either due to other people or your actions or lack thereof. So it's up to you. It's trying to tell you something. It's up to you. <clears throat> the end result of the situation you are asking about is entirely in your hands. You can affect the outcome by taking a proactive approach to solving any challenges. Stand in your own power and have confidence that you have what it takes to bring about a happy ending. Do not wait for someone else to rush in and take charge. In order to come to a successful conclusion, this situation requires your unique perspective and experience. You already have it, right? <clears throat> if you live and if you're living and in the sound of my voice, you've already got the perspective and experience on how to handle this. Okay. Wow. The key just jumped out. Okay. That's very important. Keys can open things. Keys can lock things. Right? Ch Chiave. The key. What number is it? Number 16. The key. While the downcast are fast asleep, like the blissful, they have no need to weep. This card announces the opening of new doors, many opportunities, and overall improvements in the quality of life and good fortune. Open yourself to new possibilities. You will be lucky. Well, <clears throat> you know, I really don't know what to say about that. Because to me, this doesn't look necessarily like luck. It looks like a, a change, a turn of the wheel. So I can't say it's not lucky. Um, because we really don't know what the lesson is when things happen to us, right? But as I say, the key talks about something very, very important. The keys, keys imply responsibility. And the key either will solve, it'll be the key in terms of finding out the, the answer, knowing what the problem is. To get to the solution, keys offer solutions. But it can also be the idea that you are locked out of something and you can't access it. Okay? So you do want to be careful. And so that is what I have for you. Um, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising for January 2023. I do hope those messages help. And until next time, be well, stay safe, and namaste.